Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Many Canadians are stranded abroad, worried and wanting to come home at the first opportunity. I'd like to extend a thanks to the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the collaboration and information that he has given and worked with all of our colleagues in this House to get as many Canadians home as quickly as possible. But we also recognize that there are many Canadians abroad who may have to stay in place. I'm wondering if the minister could give them advice and I identify what kind of support his office could offer them. The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for the great collaboration. Uh, what we are doing, Madam Speaker, is probably the largest repatriation effort in Canada's history, in peacetime at least. And I want to say that uh, no one is going to be left behind, Madam Speaker. We are doing, as the member said, the largest repatriation. We're helping people to, to come home. And for those that we won't be able to come home, we will provide consular services wherever they might be, uh, Madam Speaker. We have already worked with our mission, identified what we can do, and we will continue to help Canadians wherever they might be. Our member for Aurora, Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. During this crisis, there will be a need for critical medical items, many of which are not manufactured in Canada. Will the government ensure that those critical items are manufactured in Canada? Federal Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And in fact, procuring of medical devices, including personal protective equipment, testing kits, and a number of other items that are in desperate need all around the globe is uh, a, a major preoccupation of mine. And certainly the work of my department in partnership with the Minister of Innovation, Science, and Economic Development is looking at domestic manufacturing of many of these items. Uh, I am very encouraged by the volume of uh, manufacturers and suppliers that have stepped up to be part of a Canadian solution in this time of immense need. Thank you. The R member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Well, Madam Speaker, with many of these items uh, short supply and supply chains under strain and borders closed, we're wondering if the minister could shed some light on whether or not those items will remain in Canada. The R Minister of Health. Madam Speaker, uh, the organizations that have offered to uh, support manufacturing of medical devices and other kinds of things that we need in Canada for this unprecedented public health crisis is really one that is about making sure Canadians have what they need and Canadian health care workers have what they need. And so I want to thank all of the manufacturers who have been so incredibly prompt to ensure that we know about their uh, abilities and their, and, and their, uh, their, uh, their plans. We'll be working with them very closely to help accelerate access to those products. The Honourable for, Member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. How will the government ensure that these criti critical items are distributed to appropriate organizations according to priority and need at a fair price, rather than a first-come, first-serve basis or going to the highest bidder? The R.O. Minister of Health. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, the Federal Provincial Territorial Partnership is one of the ways that we make sure that equipment is distributed according to need and according to population size. Those conversations are ongoing. There is uh, working groups at every level of government on this issue of procurement and distributing it in a way that actually meets the need of the community at its present time. We'll continue that work with our partners to make sure that as we see the evolution of this pandemic in Canada, we have resources in the right spot at the right time. The R member for Oak Ridge, Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And so my last question would be around how quickly will we see those manufacturers being able to get into motion and will the government be setting the levels which they will be required or asked to produce at? Will the government be buying and setting those levels so that they know what and amounts to produce, and how quickly will we be seeing that? The Minister has about 30 seconds to respond. Uh, the short answer is yes, Madam Speaker. We're working very closely with the identified manufacturers who have come forward to date to ensure that the product that they're manufacturing meets the specifications of the practitioners who will be using it, and we'll continue that work to make sure that what they design is what Canada needs. Thank you. The